Oregon White Oak and the oak communities that you find in the Willamette Valley are one of the most imperiled ecosystems in the entire United States. Today, more than 95% of those communities are gone compared to 150 years ago, making it important that we act to protect them now. White Oak is significant from a historic aspect because that was the dominant habitat tree here in the Willamette Valley. It's sort of the marker species of what plants and animals existed in the Willamette Valley pre-settlement. When the first settlers arrived, I, I like to characterize the Willamette Valley that they encountered as being the Yellowstone of the Northwest. It was this really abundant and diverse landscape with uh, amazing wildlife diversity with uh, elk and two kinds of deer and grizzly bears and wolves and cougars and California condors uh, and the Wild Valley was this mosaic of prairie and savanna, uh, denser forests along the floodplains and into the foothills. Uh, really amazing landscape that is uh, you know, some of those pieces are just shadows now. When I think about oak trees, I think about a really important cultural plant to our people. Myself, I'm Kalapuya. My family uh, signed the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855. Oak trees are something that you need to manage for generations to produce food. So one generation produces enough food for a person, 25 years. 50 years, enough for three people. 75 years, and a whole family of people can live off the food. In the Pacific Northwest, I think there's about 750 species of, of wildlife that visit or breed here. In the Willamette Valley, we've got just a 200, 250 species that breed, and almost all of those um, mammals and birds that live in the Willamette Valley use oaks at some time during the year. We have a, uh, a herd of uh, 50 or 60 elk that's been probably, I'd say, a week out of every two weeks here on the property. And uh, uh, the reason they're here is because we have a lot of cover for them. Uh, I look at the, in the entire property more as a wildlife preserve there's about a thousand species of native plants in the Willamette Valley, and about half of those are strongly associated with prairie and oak habitats. Um, the problem is that the amount of space that they have is smaller and smaller. There's a lot of things working against um, oak conservation, you know, first and foremost is the population growth that's projected for, for the Willamette Valley. You know, agriculture is intensifying and the human population is gonna double in the valley in the next 15 years. And there's going to be fewer spaces for oak woodlands and, and prairies and all of these natural habitats we're trying to conserve. Another significant consideration in the decline of white oaks is that they do not have any regulatory or other protection in place. There's numerous threats throughout the valley, including conversion to vineyard, conversion to farmland, grazing, conversion to Douglas fir forest. Most things are much more profitable than keeping the Oregon white oak here. When we first moved to the property, it's interesting because we were advised to cut the oaks down because at that time nobody felt that they had any value. There weren't any markets for them. Most of the oaks that you find in the Willamette Valley today are more than 100 years old. There are very few younger oak trees. So if Oregonians want to protect Oregon white oak, it's important that they first and foremost protect the trees that are still here, but also be working to restore those habitats and get the next generation of oaks growing today. 
What people don't, I think, understand is what was here historically. The fact that it was a managed system for an open grassland, large oak tree habitat. In order to preserve our history, in order to preserve the things that are valuable and important to us, oak trees are a part of that. Oak ecosystems are extremely important. I think it's really important for Oregonians to recognize the significance of Oregon white oaks and the fact that they really are Oregon's tree. Today, we don't see very many of them and we don't associate Oregon with these trees, but they really do represent us and our state. It's a small number of people, uh, mostly private landowners, who really hold the fate of these habitats in their hands. And a key to that is helping landowners figure out how they can meet their goals for their land and at the same time perpetuate these habitats. In the future, I would like to see the property preserved as a wildlife preserve. Um, that's been my goal and, uh, and uh, hopefully it'll come to pass. I, I, I do not want to see it turned into a vineyard. There's a large oak uh, just about uh, a few hundred yards behind us and uh, that's where the ashes of my mother and father are. We picked the oak because it's one of the nicest on the property and also because I figured that no matter what happened to the property, that would be probably the last thing that was cut. You know, oak restoration is not difficult work. We just feel fortunate to be basically caretakers in time of these, you know, great legacy oaks and, and hope that they will be here for generations to come and, and uh, with the help that we can provide.